Rev up your engine! Today, I'm gonna to show you a really important skill you can learn about fixing cars. What do you do if you have a trouble code, say for the engine coolant temperature sensor, you replace the sensor, but the code comes back and it's not fixed. Do you scratch your head? Do you run away to a mechanic and pay a fortune? No, you can actually fix it yourself. Being a mechanic the last 52 years, I see lots of that. Customer tried to fix their own car, coolant temperature sensor, maybe an oxygen sensor, maybe a mass air flow sensor. They get a code for it, they replace the part, and voila, the check engine light comes back on with the same code. Now for my first warning here, if you're ever fixing your own car, you get a code and you replace a part. If it's a sensor, like a MAF sensor, oxygen sensor, please only use the OEM, the original equipment manufacturer sensor. Now, you don't have to go to the dealer and buy it, let's say, it's a Lexus or a Toyota, it's got a Nip and Denso sensor. You can buy Nip and Denso sensors lots of places. But don't say it's got a Nip and Denso sensor. Don't buy an aftermarket Bosch sensor. A lot of times they won't work. And please, don't buy any of those really cheap Chinese sensors. I have had numerous customers over the years go and buy especially a MAF sensor, a mass airflow sensor from a discount auto parts store. It's made in China. They put it on their car, but the code comes back and I find out it's just because they bought a bad sensor. Always buy the OEM factory sensors, the company that makes them. They're very specific. But let's say you did buy the factory OEM sensor. You put it on, you reset the trouble code, say a race code, yes, yes, and then you drive around, the stupid check engine light comes back on with the same code. What do you do? Well, here's what you do. If you got this code, the PO117 for the engine coolant temperature sensor, isn't working right. So you find where the sensor is. In this case, it's right here. You can always look it up online. I use all data for this stuff. The sensor is right here. The wire feeds it. So you just unbolt it, put a new sensor in. But if the code comes back, guess what? That didn't fix the problem. What are you gonna do? Scratch your head, give up, start screaming and yelling? No, you can use this tool. This is an OTC VET 100. What it does is it generates electricity. All you have to do is hook it up to the battery, positive to positive, negative to negative. The green light comes on so you know it's right. It's not green, it's not hooked up right, so you know if it's got power. Then as you can see, it's got the input power and the output. Now the output is adjustable. Now it shows the input and the output. Now it starts at half a volt, but we're going to put it on 5 volts. That will be the output that comes out that we can probe. Now why or why are we putting it on 5 volts? Well, that's because the engine coolant temperature sensor, it's a 5 volt reference sensor. It uses 5 volts. It doesn't use 12. It's a computer sensor. So whatever sensor you're working on, you got to find out what voltage it is. I use all data, information systems, they give great information. You of course can use Google, whatever. Find the voltage of the sensor you're working on. You set that at that voltage. Then we're going to use a scan tool. You can use any scan tool that does readings of the various sensors. They all don't make happy noises like this Bosch, but <laughs> then we'll select coolant, which will give us the raw data coming from the coolant sensor. Now, here comes the tricky part. When you disconnect the connector, one is five volts and one is ground. You wanna give power to the five volt ones, but you don't wanna ruin the system. So, you can do like I do, and look it up on your all data, but if you don't have an information system, just get a voltmeter. So, with the key on, test one side, then the other. Well, that one's ground at zero volts, as you can see, and the other one is 4.9 volts. So that's the five volt one, the one on the left side. And as you can see, the one on the left side, that is a green with a black stripe on it. There, now you can see the green with the black. That's the power one. So you just connect it back on. Then with the little setting here, set at five volts, take off the little tip guider because it's sharp and probe it into the green and black wire that sends power. You just probe it in. Then once probed, you push this button here, that sends the five volts through and you read the data. If you're adding five volts and you look at the data on the scan tool and it says five volts and you got the code on, that means the sensor's bad. That means you bought the wrong sensor or if you're just testing it and you didn't buy one yet, you know it's time to buy a new sensor. But if the voltage is lower than five volts, that means that either the wiring from the computer to the sensor is bad or the computer itself is bad. And in this case, it's 3.5 volts. So either the wiring or the computer is bad. 
You want to pray it's not the computer. Now, of course, you don't want to guess with an expensive new computer. And this Lexus parts labor reprogram is going to cost you well over $1,000. So, here's how you test that. What you do is you go to the computer itself. And if you're going this far, you definitely need something like all data. As you can see here, that's all the computer connectors. And it shows you what each one is. You got to go through them all, find out which color wires and which one is the one for your temperature sensor. Then you go to that wire and you back probe that connector and give it the five volts. So of course you need to know where the computer is. Well in this case it's up in the dash. You got to pull the glove box off. And I'm not going to show you it because the only reason this one came out is because I unplugged it to make the code pop. There's actually nothing wrong with this. It's a Lexus. It doesn't matter that it's 19 years old. I have never ever had a problem with the ECT sensor on any Lexuses. But I'm using it as an example. So once you find the computer computer and the feed wire. You plug this in and give it 5 volts and here's what you're looking for. You gave it 5 volts. If the voltage reading on the computer reads the same 5 volts, that means that the wiring harness is bad. That's what you're going to pray for. You're going to pray that it's the wiring harness. In this case, technically it was the wiring harness because I unplugged it to make the trip code. But if there was a short in the wiring harness, it would then read 5 volts when you gave it power at the computer. If the voltage on your scan tool says a lot less than 5 volts, that means that your ECM isn't processing the system right and it's going to need replacing. It gets expensive. Pray that doesn't happen to you, but again, I've only ever changed one computer on a Lexus and it was a V8 400 model. It was very old. It's a rarity that they go out in these things, unless the car's wrecked and then all bets are off because wires can short off and ruin everything. Big reason not to buy a wrecked Lexus. <laughs> now you might think, why would your car get weird because the coolant temperature sensor goes out? Well, that's because cars aren't as simple as they used to be. When I was a young mechanic, the only thing the coolant temperature sensor did was send data to your temperature gauge so you could see if your car was running hot or not. But of course, modern cars, it tells the computer the operating temperature. It allows it to go into closed loop operation so the oxygen sensors make it work efficiently and that it doesn't pollute. It'll even affect how your transmission shifts on a late model car. So, if that engine coolant temperature sensor or ECT sensor goes bad, you could have all kinds of problems. Now you know how to test them. And this isn't a one-off fix. You can use this machine and a scan tool to test any sensor you just need to know the voltage that the sensor operates on. Many computer sensors operate on 5 volts, but some are a little different. So you do have to research what exactly does it use for its power supply. Well, when you consider that this little tool can let you figure out whether you need a computer or not, and you're not guessing, it's worth its weight in gold. Because you don't want to ruin any computer systems using 12 volts. Your battery, of course, is 12 volts. This turns the 12 volts into whatever voltage you need. Do not ever test a car using straight 12 volt power. For example, this Autool electric testing device and measurer, it's great for measuring stuff, but look what happens when you push the button. It supplies 12 volts. And if you supply 12 volts to a 5 volt or a 3 volt system, it'll destroy it. That's where this comes in really handy. Gives a voltage you want, and it only gives a voltage when you push the button and the arrows turn on. So if your car's check engine light comes on, and you change the part that it refers to and it doesn't fix it, now you know what you can actually do about it yourself. And considering that many mechanics now charge $130 and more an hour labor, you might start getting into this electronic stuff. And if you're really good at it, hey, maybe you'll end up like me and you'll fix them for a living. But even if not, you can save yourself a ton safely using the right voltage when you're testing stuff. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.